I think uh, we'll get going uh, just so that we can cover everything. Uh, the agenda, first I'll give some uh, club uh, status and information and then we'll get to our main topic. We have the MAXIG uh, meeting coming up uh, February 24th, so a week from Friday. Um, uh, Mike usually sets the agenda right before the meeting, so uh, it's usually current topics and questions that uh, people have. If you do have an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, uh, it's well worth your time to uh, uh, contact Mike and get added to the Macintosh distribution list uh, with the meeting links and information. Uh, we do have our monthly question and answer meeting, uh, and our next one will be Tuesday, March 7th. Uh, and then our next general meeting will be uh, a month from now, uh, Wednesday, March 15th, and that'll be on solid state hard drives, uh, kind of compared to uh, the physical hard drives that most of us have had in the past, and also RAM. And these are things that, uh, what to look at if you're looking to upgrade your PC or Mac or uh, buying new, what to look for. And so we'll talk about some of the differences of SSDs versus HDDs and uh, what RAM does and if you need RAM. Our officers, <clears throat> excuse me, Jim is our president, Linda is our vice president, Paul is our membership secretary, Paula is our treasurer, Chuck's our recording secretary, Mike's our Mac SIG director, Andrew is our communication coordinator, uh, my name is Tom uh, Kreitzer, I'm the director at large, and uh, what's, we're made up of volunteers there. And here's a picture from our last picnic in 2019. Members old and new, uh, you can pay your dues to Paul, our $8. Uh, it, we, uh, not everybody comes due on the same month. So all throughout the year, uh, Paul will send out notices when your uh, membership is expiring there. But a reminder, if you are changing your email, uh, if you're retiring or changing internet providers or uh, retiring an old email, notify us because that's the way we keep in touch and send out notices and links for, for things like this meeting. Uh, suggestions for topics, you can email uh, any of your ideas for topics uh, to any of the board members. Uh, we just did our uh, club annual club survey and we asked a lot of information on the topics uh, but if you come up with new ideas or new things that you'd like to see uh, certainly contact us. We're also always looking for uh, a volunteer to present. Could be on a piece of hardware that you're using or software. Uh, could be something that you do at work or something that you do at home. If you are kind of shy and don't want to present that's fine. Uh, I can help you with it if you want some help, uh, but if you don't want to present at all, we do have a monthly eBytes newsletter. You can write a short, meaning just a sentence or two, or a long article, and we'll include it in the monthly eBytes newsletter. Okay, we just had somebody join, if they can mute themselves. Uh, the website, uh, we do put our past meeting slides and handouts out there. We do have our uh, recordings also. I, we try and record the screen and make that available. So that's usually out there. We have a deal section. We do have our eBytes uh, newsletter, our monthly eBytes newsletter. And uh, the link to that uh, is sent in all the emails that we sent out. Or you can just search on Google for the uh, 3M PCC Club. Okay, let's get to our main topic today, which is uh, best phone and tablet apps uh, by myself, Tom Kreitzer. Uh, the handout, and this is where uh, Jim will be putting the handout in the chat section. Otherwise, you can go out to the, uh, the club website now and also download it or print it. Uh, the handout is a spreadsheet, uh, but I do have PDF uh, of it. And the handout is a list of all these different apps, uh, and they're sorted by category and then by app name. Let's talk about some of the other columns there. Uh, oh, I got ahead of myself. Let me get here. So the first cat, uh, column here is a category, and we have categories. These are major groupings of apps. Uh, they're not my particular groupings. Uh, they're 
gotten from other websites and other reviews that uh, group these apps together. Uh, and then we have uh, the app name. Uh, the important thing about the app name itself is that uh, the name the name can vary from whether it's out on the Apple site or it's out on the Android site. And the names do change a little bit. So if you're searching for apps out there, uh, you want to be careful or make sure that you get the correct one. Uh, and I'll show you some tips in another slide or two. Uh, this third column uh, that's out here is cost. Uh, most of them are free or have a free version, which is good because you can try it out. If there is a fee for it or a monthly fee, uh, I'll list that also. The OS or operating system, some of the apps uh, will only work on an Android device. Some of them will only work on an Apple device, but most of them will work on both devices. So uh, this is trying to give you a heads up on uh, if it isn't available and you have an iPhone, let's say, uh, and it's only available on Android, uh, you're out of luck there. The key is uh, where did the recommendation for this app come from? And uh, I pulled together a number of uh, reviews and recommendations and uh, if it has an A in this column, so there can be multiple letters in this column. If there's an A in this column, that means it came from the PC Magazine 100 Best Android Apps. And uh, if you want to look at the full review, I uh, list the URL here and you can go out there. If it has a B in this column, that means that it's uh, from the PC Magazine 100 Best iPhone Apps. Uh, if it has a C in there, uh, it came from Tom's Guide, 20 Best iPad Apps. Now, Tom's is not myself, uh, even though my name is Tom. Uh, this is uh, Tom's is a well-respected uh, reviewer, and uh, I like uh, what he recommends and his site, uh, so uh, I include those. If there's a D in there, that came from the Google Play Store, and that uh, means that it's currently in the top 45 downloaded Android apps from the Google Play Store. There's a T there. This is uh, where this is an app that I personally use, and I have an Android smartphone and an iPad tablet. So I use a combination of both uh, uh, Apple and Android there. And if there's an M in that column, it was recommended by a 3M PC Club member. And we asked on the last survey if people had recommendations. And we've gotten other recommendations on apps that people particularly like. The last column out here is the new column. This means that it's new since the last time that I did this presentation or created this list here. So the last time that we did this list was in 2019. So this just means that it's now appearing uh, for uh, the first time. Uh, it wasn't on the 2019 presentation. So that'll give you kind of an idea because uh, apps come and go. Uh, trends do change. So uh, if you're looking for something new, uh, that, that would show up there. Okay, where do you search or download apps? Well, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you're going out to the Apple App Store and the Apple App Store has 2.56 million apps. That's why it's important when you're searching for names, there's lots of names that are very close. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting the right one, and I'll have a few tips a little later on that too. If you have an Android, you usually go out to the Google Play Store that has 2.8 million uh, apps out there. And I list the URL here because you'll see in a little bit uh, when I'm showing these apps and looking up, frequently I'll use my laptop or desktop to search the Google Play Store because I have a larger screen. I can look up all kinds of things. And then actually there's even a button that I can push to have it installed on one of my Android devices. So it makes it very easy to uh, look something up, uh, search for something, and then install it on the device. This is a caution here. Uh, there are other sources to to get apps from. 
be very, 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 I can't put enough varies in there, careful of any email that you get, any link on a website, uh, or any file that somebody sends you that uh, uh, proposes to be an app there. You really do want to download only from the Apple App Store or the Android Google Play Store. Those have been scanned for viruses. Those have been checked out. Um, so, so don't don't load from other areas or links or emails that you might get. Okay, this is the Google Play Store, and this is how it looks on. Uh, excuse me, a laptop or a desktop here. And like I said, I like to look at stuff, look up stuff on my laptop or desktop just because I have a larger screen uh, and do things there. But it, you can go in and you can do a search. And when you do a search, you get back uh, results here. And usually there's a whole bunch of things that uh, have the certain words in there that you are searching for. When you find the one or want to look it up, uh, this is this is the detail for that app, and we'll cover a few things that, regardless of uh, well, not regardless, but uh, anytime you're looking to uh, install an app or search for an app, these are things that you should look for. One of the things that you should look for is what are the reviews and scores for this app. So on a five star system, this app is scoring four point six stars. And the reviews, there's over 308,000 reviews here. You don't want something that only scored one star or uh, has uh, 100 reviews. You don't want that. Another important uh, number to look at on the screen is installs. And in this particular case, this app has been installed on over 10 million devices. Uh, so if you get, again, if you see an app that is only on a thousand devices or a hundred devices, never install that because uh, uh, chances are that's a scam or somebody trying to uh, make a name of an app that's close to a very popular one. Uh, instead of Facebook, maybe it's uh, FacePad or something like that, and they've got uh, 10 users there. Uh, this is the button uh, you can actually install. I mentioned this is how I install uh, on my different devices because I can click this even though I'm on my laptop or desktop and it'll tell me whether I've got it already installed on a device uh, or if that app is suitable for, the, for one of the devices that I have uh, registered here. Another thing is uh, you'll see in here uh, when we get to some of the detail for the app uh, in this area you may see videos so there may be a YouTube video or there may be images in here and this lets you uh, check out the app before you actually download it so you can get a good idea of what the screens look like uh, what features and functions it has so it's kind of nice there. Another area on here is a similar area. So this is trying to help you out. If, if this is, turns out to be not the app that you want, uh, Google is recommending other apps that are very similar. Okay, if we scroll down on, uh, on the Google Play Store, uh, we see things, uh, more things about the app here. The about this app, there'll usually be uh, some detail here of some of the features in that. And you can certainly look that over, read it over. This is another very important thing to check is when was it last updated? And in this case, this app was last updated February 10th of 2023. If the app hasn't been updated in a year or two years or three years, that's a bad sign uh, because most apps are getting updated uh, at least once a month, uh, if not uh, two or three times a year. So you, it sh you should have a very recent uh, date on here for popular apps. This is a button here uh, that also will bring up similar uh, apps. If you, uh, uh, yeah, let's say the number of uh, users is low and you're looking for a similar app, you can click it and, and get similar uh, app information.
This is the detail of the reviews and uh, ratings, and you'll see individual comments here that you can scroll through, but also you can see how many people uh, rated it at five star, four star, three, two, one. Okay, so that that's a kind of watch what you do on the App Store. The App Store can be your friend. It can really help you out and tell you uh, what's popular and things like that. Here's a couple other tips uh, that you should do. So uh, I make it a point before uh, installing any new apps, go through your old apps and look at apps that you're not using on your phone or tablet. Uh, and so you may have uh, installed them a month ago or a year ago. Uh, somebody gave you a hint or you saw somebody doing something with it and you installed it, but you haven't used it. Uh, if you aren't using apps, go out there and delete them. They're taking up space. They're uh, draining the battery because, uh, uh, again, when new versions come out, they have to be downloaded. They have to be installed. Uh, they're taking up memory. So you really want to get rid of the old apps. And even if you do delete an app that you need in, a, let's say, another month or another week, you, you find that, oh, I wish I hadn't deleted the app. It just takes you a few seconds usually to uh, uh, install the app again, download and install the app again. So because it's so easy, be brutal. Go through, delete your old apps that you aren't using. Another tip is if it's a particular feature or function that you don't do very often, uh, consider using the browser and going to a website instead of downloading an app. Uh, so you don't need an app for everything in the world. Uh, you can still use your browser to get at a lot of uh, things that uh, uh, an app has. So let's say you don't do a whole lot with Facebook. Maybe you don't need the Facebook app. You can just get by going into your browser and using Facebook from the browser there. So that's, that's just a little uh, way that you can save space, again, save your battery and just make your uh, your desktop and uh, everything else cleaner on your phone or tablet or wherever. Okay, format of this meeting. We're gonna move quickly because there's almost 300 apps and I'm not gonna talk about all 300 apps or we'd be here for days. Uh, you hold your questions or comments till the end. Uh, uh, you can put it in the chat and we'll take a look. So let's take a look at the list. And let me go over here to where I have the list. And I mentioned this is a spreadsheet, uh, and the spreadsheet is available out on the website, but we also have a PDF file that you can just print out. And these are the columns that we were talking about here. So the first category of apps that we'll talk about is cooking and food. And uh, within the cooking and food, uh, I'll just specifically talk about a couple of uh, uh, different items that I found very useful and interesting. And so the first one, uh, so I've highlighted the ones that I'm going to talk about out here. So I remember uh, I have it right here. First one I'm going to talk about is tip and split. It's for calculating tips. Uh, and uh, let me go over to the Google Play Store if I can. Let me get here. Uh, so here's the Google Play Store, and I searched for tip and split. Uh, the results here, there's a number of apps that, it's, uh, that it came up with there. The one that I'm looking for or may be interested in is this particular one. Now, this particular one has a video. So if I want to see what it does, let's click it. And you should tip and split it. is your ultimate dining companion. The app saves you the trouble of calculating the tip and splitting the bill. Tip and Split calculates the tip at the blink of an eye. All that you have to do is to enter the bill amount and the tip percentage. The app does the rest. Eating out with friends? Wondering how much it is for each? Split the bill easily with a tap on the Tip and Split app. A quick rounding off to the nearest dollar spares you the small change while still ensuring that a fair tip is given. Review the tipping guide to know more about tipping etiquette. 
It even answers a few frequently asked questions regarding tipping. You can even set the default tip percentage in the settings menu. Armed with the Tip and Split app, you can dine out with ease no matter what your group size is. Tip and Split is brought to you by Handy Apps and available for free in the Google Play Store. Let's go into it here. So this is, uh, I'm in there and you can see in this case, it's been installed over a million times, 4.5 rating, good rating. Uh, I have it installed on one of my devices, but it's asking if I want to install it on some of the others. There's some of the screenshots we talked about. Uh, it mentioned in there that it has tipping guides. So if you're not uh, familiar, how much you should tip, let's say, housekeeping or uh, uh, somebody at the airport or stuff like that, it'll have guides there. And if you're traveling internationally, it has guides for every country in the world there. So it's kind of nice uh, to, to keep you. Uh, but I use it uh, whenever I go to a restaurant and I'm meeting with friends and we look to uh, split the bill. Uh, this is the fastest way possible. Uh, uh, to do things there. And so there, there's where you see some of the other information that we talked about. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. So a uh, tip and splits, a very nice package, uh, gives you a very nice, uh, you see some other things in here. Uh, you'll see uh, some of the restaurants. So some of the restaurants or the uh, chains have, uh, have their own apps. And if you frequent those dining places, usually you'll want to download those apps because those apps are going to give you uh, loyalty. Uh, after so many purchases, you may get a free meal or you get a discount or they have coupons, electronic coupons. So uh, any, any restaurant that you frequent, uh, make sure that you download. And some of the other uh, apps in here uh, are for uh, delivery and stuff like that. Let's go to the next topic here, which is creativity. Most of the apps in this category uh, fall into uh, photo editing. Uh, and probably one of the best ones, uh, especially if you are kind of a semi-professional or consider yourself semi-professional uh, in editing your photos and sharing your photos and things like that, is an app called Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom is one of the few apps that there is a monthly fee for. It's $9.99 a month. But with for that, you get both the software and you get unlimited cloud storage of your photos and videos. So it can be very nice to share and to organize and to work with your photos there. There's also other apps out here for editing. Uh, uh, and stuff like that. Some of them are particular to, let's say, TikTok or different areas. Uh, here's one that we talked about in the past and one that I, that I use, uh, Google Photos. Uh, Google Photos uh, will do both backup of your photos from your phone or any device up to uh, the Google Cloud. You can also view, edit, and organize. Uh, those photos, when it used to be that uh, Google Photos, you got free unlimited storage of the photos, but now uh, you no longer have unlimited storage. You, uh, by default, your Google account gets 15 gigabytes of space for all your emails, all your photos, all your Google Docs. Uh, so if you need more space, you need to, uh, you can buy space starting at $1.99 a month. Okay, another popular one that I use and have talked about before, it's called Google Photo Scan. So this is an app that uses the camera on your phone to let you create a digital scan of a photograph or a picture or uh, virtually anything that you can take a picture of, you can capture a div digital image there. The beauty of this app compared to just your straight phone is this takes uh, a series of five photos from different angles 
And so if you've got glare, if there's glass over a, a picture frame or the photo has uh, uh, some other lighting problems or stuff like that, Google Photos will stitch together those five images and automatically crop it for you to create a digital image. So it's a very nice little uh, uh, little app there and it works great for, again, virtually any photos, any pictures on walls, uh, any pictures in books, uh, anything there, you can uh, create a digital copy there. Another one I'll mention in here, uh, I don't have it highlighted here, but Stop Motion Studio. Uh, I've got uh, uh, my uh, great nieces and nephews, and they're at the age uh, where uh, uh, they get a kick out of creating stop motion uh, movies. And one of the best packages there, uh, which is free, uh, you can do it for free, is Stop Motion Studio. And uh, uh, so you can take uh, figures that they have, or cars, or trucks, or things like that, and set up your uh, tablet or your phone, capture it, and then play back these, uh, these uh, movies, and add sounds, and all kinds of things. So a uh, very nice little package there. Okay, the next category we'll talk about is education. Uh, and if you haven't uh, gone out to any of these sites or used the power of the internet for the education, I highly recommend it. And one of the best for free classes, and these are truly classes on almost every subject you can think of, Khan Academy. Khan Academy uh, is, uh, uh, has gotten... Uh, funding from uh, uh, Bill Gates and some of the other, uh, the Warren Buffett and, and things like that to create literally thousands of classes on every subject that you can think of. This is especially helpful too if you're a parent or a grandparent and you're trying to help your kid out with uh, uh, some uh, uh, math or uh, stuff like that that you may have forgotten how to do a geometry or or a trigonometry or whatever you can you can brush up and uh, and uh, learn some of the classes there along those same lines uh, uh, you may have heard of TED conferences uh, these are tech talks and there's thousands of these TED conferences where they bring in some of the experts uh, from across the world and they give a presentation on all kinds of subjects and stuff like that. So uh, if you're looking to delve into uh, some of these things, maybe it's AI, uh, may, uh, whatever. Maybe it's deep fake uh, videos. Uh, uh, you can you can uh, pull up the TED conferences and uh, easily search and view them and create playlists. Uh, so when you do have time, uh, you can go through and uh, and find some of these. Okay, next category is entertainment. Uh, a lot of the uh, apps in this category are streaming uh, systems. So your, your Netflix, uh, your HBO, your ESPN, your Disney, uh, all the different streaming services usually have their own app there. And so uh, depending on which service you pick, you usually want to download that app and have it. I've highlighted DirecTV Stream. That's uh, currently the service that I'm using. Uh, and again, that's not a free service. Uh, that, uh, uh, depending on the level that you want and the number of uh, uh, devices you want it on and how much DVR recording there, uh, prices start at about $50 and go up. Uh, you can be paying uh, up to $200 or more. Uh, another uh, one in there, or some in this category are podcast players. So, uh, and we had a presentation. I did a presentation on podcasts. So uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so. And uh, if you're going to listen to podcasts, you want a good podcast player. Uh, there's all kinds of features and functions in all these different uh, podcasts. You want to listen to them at faster than normal speed because you want to get through an hour podcast and 30 minutes, you can do it. If you, uh, I don't have an unlimited data plan, 
but I do uh, like to listen to podcasts. So I download the podcasts that I want to listen to to onto my device. And uh, my device then deletes them after I uh, listen to them and keeps track of it. It also syncs that uh, what I've listened to between uh, my other devices. So I can go to one of my other devices and pick up where I left off on a podcast, or I can uh, 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 have my same playlist and stuff like that uh, from device to device. So uh, that can be very useful. Again, a lot of these other ones are, are uh, for TV streaming. Uh, if you have uh, you know any any of the major networks, uh, uh, there's free stuff in here uh, for uh, the free stuff. Usually is for old movies, old TV shows. Uh, but uh, you know there's a wealth of a wealth of stuff out there. Uh, another one I use is I use the TV Guide app. Uh, and I find the TV Guide app to be very helpful because uh, it uh, uh, lets me set up my favorites and, and that so I can uh, uh, direct TV. Uh, I have maybe 80 channels or 90 channels. Well, I set up my favorites, the ones that I most often watch. Uh, I can see that. I can see whether it's a new episode tonight or not a new episode. And uh, then... Uh, I can go to my uh, my uh, streaming app and record it. And I usually record it because frequently uh, if you watch on-demand things, some of the on-demand won't let you skip commercials. Whereas if I record, I can always skip commercials. So uh, usually if there's something that I want to watch, I'll record it. And this goes for even things like the evening news. I don't watch the evening news live. I'll record it. It's a half hour show. I can watch it in about 10, 10 minutes or so because I'll skip uh, uh, topics that I'm not interested in and then skip past the commercials and things like that. So uh, with a DVR, with the setting things up, makes it real easy there. Another app I highly recommend is YouTube. Uh, if you're not familiar, I mentioned that we do record these meetings. Uh, the meetings are then available out on YouTube. Uh, so YouTube's an excellent platform. I, uh, I also use YouTube for uh, my family uh, videos and any videos that I want to share with anyone. I put it out on that platform and organize it. You can create channels. Uh, you can define who can see it, whether it's public, uh, whether it's limited to certain people. Uh, but uh, I find it very useful there. So I use Google Photos for my photos. Uh, Google Photos I don't use for my videos. I put my videos out on YouTube. Okay, our next uh, category here is finance. And almost every financial institution and every bank uh, has, has their own app. And... Uh, this is a case I mentioned earlier that some, sometimes you can get by using the browser and going to the websites. Uh, for finance, I don't recommend going using the browser route. I recommend using their app because the apps are much more secure in the way that they communicate uh, and pass information to and from your bank or uh, stock transactions or things like that. So. Uh, you do want to you do want to use the app. Also, there's usually features and functions that you won't find uh, in the website. An example would be if I wanted to direct deposit a check into my Fidelity account. I use Fidelity. Uh, I can just uh, use the Fidelity app. Uh, it uses the camera on my phone. I take a picture and it's immediately deposited. I don't have to send it in the mail. I don't have to take it to an ATM. I don't have to do anything there. So that can be very nice. Another app in here that I uh, recommend, uh, I don't use it a whole lot, but uh, each, uh, each year I usually have a garage sale, and at the garage sale I do take credit cards, uh, credit cards and other charges there, and Square uh, makes a reader, a uh, credit card reader. You can get it for free. Uh, and then uh, I can scan credit cards. And so if people don't have enough cash or that, uh, I can do it. 
Now, there is a fee for uh, taking like credit cards. It's like 2.8%. But uh, uh, if you have bigger ticket items or just want to make it easier for people, uh, having the ability to use like the square register is, is a great thing there. Okay. Games, I, there's not a whole lot of games here. Uh, if you're a game player, you probably know uh, which ones you like uh, or uh, the different sites that you use and that. Uh, and none of these reviews really got too much into the games there. And I'm not a game player, so i sorry I can't help you there. Uh, health and fitness, lots of different health and fitness apps out there. Uh, probably uh, one of the more popular is Fitbit. Uh, it also works, uh, you don't have to have a Fitbit device, but it uh, interfaces uh, very well with the Fitbit device. Uh, one that I use, uh, I have uh, uh, blood pressure, and uh, uh, so I take readings there. Well, those readings are automatically fed into uh, the app on my phone, and then I can make them available when I have a doctor's visit. Uh, and I can track and see how things are going there. And I mention that also because there's so many new smart devices that are coming out, uh, whether it's, in this case, a blood pressure uh, a reader, could be a scale. Uh, you can buy scales for uh, scales that interface with uh, apps and with these fitness uh, for just uh, maybe a few dollars more than what a regular scale would cost. So uh, if you're looking to buy anything new uh, for the house or, or anything there, look to get a smart device that uh, might interface with an app and let you, uh, let you keep track of things there. Okay, another app that I use, uh, I, now that I'm retired, I try and get my 10,000 steps in a day. And I use an app called Map My Run, uh, although it, it's not just for running. And actually, they make a Map My Walk, Map My Run, Map My Bike. But they all do the same thing. And you can do all these activities from the same, same app there. Uh, but this, uh, I like it because uh, it uh, uses GPS uh, to show the route, to show the elevation changes that I've made, to track uh, my speed. Uh, if I'm running, or not running, if, I, if I'm walking uh, uh, a similar route that I did or the same route that I did last week, I can check and check it against and see whether I'm faster or slower, uh, what's going on. So that's the reason I like that app. Uh, another one, uh, as we get older, you usually have more medical problems or uh, things like that uh, to look up and diagnose or... or uh, Get uh, tips if you're looking uh, for what you should be eating to, uh, to uh, improve your cholesterol or uh, iron deficiency or anything like that, WebMD. Uh, that's kind of the uh, authority and grandfather of, of uh, medical information there. So very nice, very nice app there. Uh, news and the news category, lots of different uh, news uh, uh, deals out here. Uh, again, depends on what your taste is and what you have. Uh, I list here the Pioneer Press uh, e-edition. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I mentioned it's free here, but you do have to subscribe to the paper. Now, I subscribe to the St. Paul paper. I only get the Sunday edition, and I believe the last time I did it, I think I paid $65 for the entire year for the St. Paul paper. Plus, I get access to all the digital, so I can look it up any day and read any paper from any day there. And I look it up and I uh, read the paper on my tablet, because on the phone, it's pretty hard. The uh, uh, phone isn't conducive to, uh, to uh, layouts and things like that, but the, la uh, but the tablet uh, works out great, uh, lets me access the paper whenever I want and wherever I am. Okay, productivity, uh, along the same, uh, the same uh, uh, feature that we talked about for photos, uh, Adobe Scan is a, is a package that I highly recommend, uh, and it uh, uses the camera in your phone or tablet 
and enables you to uh, it to act as a scanner to create a PDF file. And it also does OCR, which is optical character recognition. So it'll translate uh, uh, whatever you're taking into text if you uh, wanted to take it out of the uh, out of the PDF and put it in, let's say, a Word file or send it as a text uh, uh, or as an email to somebody. And the Adobe Scan, uh, uh, if you have a magazine or a newspaper or uh, something like that, you can uh, uh, easily uh, create a PDF. The PDF is stored up on the Adobe website. Uh, you can share the uh, share or send a link to people if you want to from there, or if you want to, you can download it uh, to your PC or or do other things. So it offers a lot of capability, and it's a free package. Uh, Adobe does not charge uh, for the app or uh, storing the documents and things like that up on the Adobe site. And you can see there's lots of different uh, things in the productivity here, whether it's Google Docs and Microsoft Office. There's different versions and that that are out there. Uh, and uh, we've talked about those before. Uh, this is uh, one that I highly recommend. And I did a presentation, I think, uh, also in the last year on OneNote. OneNote is a, is a free package uh, from Microsoft. Uh, it's not a word processor. It's not a spreadsheet. It's not a presentation package. It's uh, for keeping track of lists, taking notes, uh, clipping things from websites, uh, voice recorder. So it's kind of like uh, in the old days before computers, you might have had a notebook that you just jotted things down and uh, you kept track of uh, different ideas or things to do or or stuff like that in there. That's what OneNote is, and OneNote is absolutely, I couldn't live without it, because uh, I keep track of uh, everything in, in uh, that package. And because the package is available on my desktop, my laptop, my phone, on my tablet, I have access to it from everywhere. I can be adding things, I can be changing things. Uh, Topics. When I prepare for a topic uh, that I'm presenting to the club, I have different notes and I just throw in uh, links and information in there. And then when I uh, uh, sit down to assemble the stuff, that's where I'll use PowerPoint or that's where I'll use uh, uh, Word or that to actually create handouts to create the presentation. But to capture all that uh, ideas and, and little notes, OneNote is great. Okay, next topic is search. Uh, the search, uh, Amazon Alexa, if you have any uh, smart devices, you want to have uh, uh, this app and you can uh, create procedures. Uh, so you can uh, do things like, Alexa, who's the smartest person in the world? Tom Kreutzer is the smartest person in the world. He has an IQ of 98,765 and is good looking too. So I don't know if you how well you could hear that, but I have it set up when I ask it who's the smartest person in the world, it says that I am, and I have an IQ of millions there, and, and I'm good looking too. So you can impress your friends with how accurate the internet really is. Okay, another, another one that I uh, highly recommend is I like to go out to the Minnesota State Fair. And this is an app that they have. This is an example of an app that I only download for like a week or two during the state fair. Uh, and then I delete it off, uh, off of my phone. I don't leave it on the phone all year round. But this app uh, lets me uh, search for the new foods out at the fair, shows me the location. Uh, uh, now, it also has other maps and things like that if you uh, do have... Uh, uh, if you don't know where you're going, but uh, that's that's there. Another app that I use uh, in the security area, so the next topic here is security, is Bitwarden as a password manager. So it used to be LastPass. I used to recommend that, and uh, most of the places would recommend that. Uh, LastPass changed its uh, model uh, to where you did have to pay money if you wanted to use it on multiple devices. 
Uh, so I switched to Bitwarden, and that's the package that I recommend. And you can store almost everything in here. And this uh, actually uh, saved saved me. I was recently at the uh, DMB renewing my driver's license, and they asked me what my uh, what my social security number was. And I wasn't expecting it, and I don't carry anything in my wallet or anything that has my full social security number. I have the last I know the last four digits, but the first three, I wasn't exactly sure what it was. And when I gave them what I thought it was uh, at the DMV, they said, no, that's not right. So then I went out to my Bitwarden, my password manager, and I had saved information like that in my password manager that I could look up and is very safe and secure from anyone else getting access there. So I highly recommend the package, uh, and we've talked about it before. Uh, shopping, lots of different shopping. Uh, shopping is similar to the, uh, to the uh, fast foods. Uh, if there's a place that you frequent, most places do have an app, uh, and I highly recommend it because you'll get discounts or loyalty uh, uh, specials or things like that. Uh, I mentioned in here for the shopping, uh, the State Farm. I have the State Farm app uh, for the driving discount, uh, and that's a device that uh, sits inside my car, interfaces with my phone, uh, and actually grades you on your acceleration, your braking, your right turns, your left turns, uh, speed limits. So it'll grade you on all those, and depending on what your grade is, you get a discount. And I think I cut my, uh, my uh, uh, cost there. Uh, down to the point, I think I cut it uh, so that it was uh, like 25% of uh, what I was paying before. So, uh, and I made it a, like a game. When I originally put it in, I think I got a B, a B or a B minus for my right turns. And uh, I started working on them. I made my turns more uh, 90 degree and I slowed down for the turns and I got my grade up to an A for the turns there. So, it can be kind of like a grade there to make sure that you're doing things okay. And if you've got kids, that's a great way to check on your kids, uh, whether they're speeding and how well they're obeying uh, a number of the laws there. Walgreens, uh, I use Walgreens and uh, get a number of benefits from that. So that's, that's one that I use. Social, uh, Facebook. Uh, again, there's there are features in the Facebook app that aren't in the browser if you go out to Facebook. So again, if you're using some of these things, check it out. Instagram, uh, if you post things out there, great way. TikTok, uh, uh, I know a lot of people or some people have talked about, well, you know, because it's Chinese owned, uh, uh, you got to watch out for security. And I'm kind of going, uh, excuse me. What are you posting on TikTok that is secure? A picture of your cat, a picture of what you ate. Uh, I don't see any problem there uh, because even a, a place like Facebook, well, okay, Facebook's no more secure than TikTok because if China wanted to, China can go out to uh, Facebook and glean a ton of information about people. So if you're looking for identity theft or things like that, uh, I'm not worried with what TikTok is doing. Uh, that's my little two cents there. Uh, Zoom, if you do do Zoom calls, uh, certainly the Zoom app uh, is nice. Travel, I mentioned in here, uh, uh, using things like Google Earth and Google Maps uh, uh, can be very helpful. Also, you get translators in here, a Duolingo or learning a language. Very nice, very, uh, very uh, good to uh, work with there. Utilities, uh, there's, uh, uh, if you have a wireless printer, you usually have to install a utility on your phone or tablet to use that wireless printer. So I have a Canon, I install this, and then I can print things directly from my phone or tablet. Uh, browsers, load a browser, uh, even the Microsoft Edge. 
SMS backup uh, nowadays uh, depends on your phone service, but uh, some of them are backing up your messages now. If they aren't backing up your messages, you want to make sure and be using a package like SMS backup. It'll put it out to, uh, in my case, uh, Gmail, and I can look at that at any time, and I could restore it on any other device if I did someone stole my phone or, or anything happened, I'd be able to get my messages back and that. Uh, I have wise cameras, security cameras, and I also uh, have, my father is still alive. He's 96 years old. I have a camera in his apartment. I can get notifications on my phone uh, when he's moving around, when he gets up in the morning, when he goes to bed at night, uh, drop in on him at any time, and I can even talk to him over the camera there. Okay, so that concludes that. Let's go back here. Okay, that's the end there. What I'll do is I'll stop sharing here and I'll open it up and we'll take a look at the chat there to see if people have questions there. Give me a second. Bye. Stop sharing. I'm going to turn on my video there. And we'll take a look at the chat. Otherwise, uh, if you do have a question, you can unmute yourself and show your video if you want. And uh, we can uh, talk. Or if there's, I see uh, Jim uh, mentions in here a new interesting camera app, Camera Plus or Camera Plus 2. So there's always new stuff coming out. And uh, uh, that can be, uh, if you're in to have any hobbies or anything like that, uh, keep yourself abreast of what's going on out there. Any other questions or comments there? We had to move pretty fast, uh, but uh, with about 300 apps out there, like I say, you may not need anything right now, but maybe in a week or a month or something, you're looking for somebody mentions, gee, uh, uh, I like sky gazing. Uh, there's apps out there for sky gazing to help you identify the constellations and to hold your phone in the proper direction or be looking up in the proper direction. So there's literally with over two and a half million apps out there, there's apps uh, that do just about everything under the sun. Okay, John mentions for some apps for, for entertainment, cell phone providers provide discounts. Yeah, so if you do have like a Verizon or an AT&T account, uh, frequently uh, you may even have a free subscription, let's say, to Disney Plus uh, that... Uh, I've known a number of people that uh, will kind of argue with me that they don't have it. And uh, uh, I say, well, depending on the plan that you have, you do have it. And it is free, uh, so you might as well take advantage of it. Uh, and uh, so there's all kinds of things. Oh, Sam, or Scott uh, asks, uh, I noticed the Tip and Split app has a pro option. What's the difference between the pro uh, and the non-pro? Uh, uh, what you usually find, uh, the main difference between a lot of the apps uh, is the apps that are free will have advertisements or pop-ups that'll uh, go in there. Uh, so the pro version uh, doesn't have that. I, I'm not aware of any other features in the pro version other than not... Uh, not having the ads. Uh, personally, it's not like I keep it open or I'm looking at it all day long. Uh, at most, I'm using it once a day when I go out to eat uh, and having an ad or something pop up there is uh, I can put up with the free version there. Okay, Ken asks, hi, Tom, I'm going to start scanning old photos with my, so does a Google Photo Scan work for iOS? Yes, the Google Photo Scan works for both. Uh, the caveat I'll put out there is, okay, the, the, the app itself 
is great when you don't have a scanner. So if you have old photos and want to digitize them, most printers will allow you to scan. That'll do the best job possible using the scanner. Uh, that, that'll be a better job than what the phone, what the camera and the lighting that you have on, the, on uh, whatever you're trying to take a picture of. So this is a case of uh, the Google Photo Scan as an example. Uh, this last Father's Day, uh, my sister brought out a, a photo she had uh, that showed my father and her uh, when she was very young. That was a photo I had never seen before. I was not in front of a scanner uh, at this point. I took out my app on the phone, took the five pictures there. It created a very nice digital image. Now, I could have gotten a better di digital image if I could have gotten the photo from my sister, took it, and scanned it on my printer, which has the scan feature on there. So. Uh, again, uh, if you can scan it on on a scanning device, you're going to end up with a better thing. Uh, but if you don't have that ability, certainly the photo scan is the next best option there. And it's certainly better than just using your camera and taking a picture. So hope hope that hope that helps there. Uh, the other the other thing is uh, I did use uh, Google Photo Scan on larger images. So uh, we had some uh, some big portraits or a painting or things like that. Well, that I can't fit into my flatbed scanner. Uh, so that's where Google uh, Photo Scan is an excellent use also. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Other questions, comments, uh, apps that you find uh, very useful? And I'd highly recommend that, uh, you know, I, we're all so busy now, but if there's, if you have certain interest in your life, chances are there's some apps out there and it's worthwhile for you to just uh, go out to the uh, to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store and uh, if if you're a collector of anything uh, uh, if you if your hobby is crossword puzzles if, if whatever it is the chances are there's apps out there to uh, that you may find beneficial so uh, even though it may not be in the top 100 apps or that around, uh, there are there are still hundreds of thousands of useful apps out there uh, to help you do almost anything under the sun. Okay, Jerry mentions uh, uh, Maps.me, uh, and and there's a number of uh, if you are traveling abroad. Uh, uh, different things to help you. Uh, if you don't have an unlimited data plan, uh, there's certainly uh, some of the maps and some of the uh, trip planning and that will allow you to download uh, the content uh, to a tablet or to uh, a phone and be able to uh, reference it there. Uh, and if you haven't used some of the translation uh, features there, if you ever get yourself uh, into a situation uh, uh, where you don't speak the language and no one around you speaks the language, they can really be a lifesaver or save you embarrassment. Uh, out of high school, I was uh, with a foreign study league and we, uh, we were 18 year olds and uh, we were over in Europe and we went to this quaint uh, 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 bar because uh, this one uh, guy from Texas always had to have his glass of milk in the morning. And so we were looking around trying to find a glass of milk. Uh, we go into the bar and none of us spoke, uh, in this case, this was uh, in Paris, none of us spoke the language and uh, we're trying to convey to him uh, that uh, we're, does he have milk? 
And uh, so there's three of us, and we're, we're going to the bartender. Moo, moo. And he, he wasn't sure if we wanted steaks or what we wanted there. Had we had a translator, we wouldn't have had the problem or, or created a, uh, uh, an incident. I'm sure that bartender thought, oh, those crazy Americans. Uh, so we, we perpetuated the stereotype of the uh, crazy uh, visitors there. And John mentions, we use Google Maps a lot, integrates with our car display, also good for walking and public transit. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and Google Maps is nice, uh, certainly, uh, with if there's road construction or uh, delays, uh, uh, things like that. If you're walking, if you're biking, uh, it'll pick uh, different routes and things like that. So lots of nice things in there. Other questions or comments? If you do have any, you can uh, send them or attend one of the question and answers. Otherwise, uh, we'll conclude today. And I want to thank everyone for uh, joining and hope you found uh, some interesting things there and uh, spike your interest a little bit to maybe go out and uh, uh, try a few things. And uh, make sure, though, if you try it and you don't end up using it, that you go back and uninstall it. Uh, don't keep uh, some of this stuff out there forever uh, taking up space. But thanks, thanks for joining today, and uh, uh, we'll see you next month. Everybody uh, take care then. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome there, yep. Linda. You, you've left me speechless today. That's why this whole world is Ooh, kind of infinite in apps and frightening. And oh, will we don't... ever get our faces out of our phones if we succumb to all that, you know? Don't so you be... leave me with a lot to ponder. <laughs> don't be frightened by it. Uh, with 2.5 million, think of it as a toolbox of tools that you can use. Everybody's... Well, I have a list there that you enabled me to create that I'm going to stick my toe in that I naturalist for the ID of plants. I've known of that app, but did not know how to access it. And that would be a nice little intro for me because I just, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time with my smartphone. I want to well, and, be and doing don't, other don't, don't touch the plant until you find out if it's uh, poison ivy or uh, what it is there. <laughs> so they can Well, be wouldn't helpful. that be handy? And then this includes animals. I don't know if it includes things like snakes or creepy stuff like that or spiders. <clears throat> so anyway, now see what you've got me pondering. So you <laughs> planted that seed again, and thanks so much. You have okay. so much beautiful We'll see you there. Share. Take it easy. Have a great afternoon. You Thank too. you. Bye.